Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. Well, it's been a really long time since I've made a candle making video and today I'm gonna to be telling you why. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you a full step-by-step -step detailed tutorial with recipe on how to make three different fragranced candles. These are candles that I normally make and sell on my website around this time of year. And also I'm gonna be testing a new fragrance oil in a single candle. But while I'm doing that, I'm gonna be also talking to you about what went wrong in 2022 and 2023 so far with my candle making and my candle sales. As mentioned, I will be placing the full recipe in the description box below so you can recreate these candles if you'd like, but I also will be writing up a full detailed step-by-step -step tutorial with percentages, the recipe, along with links to where I've purchased and acquired all the supplies to make these candles. And if you haven't checked my campaign out yet, I really hope you do. I'll go ahead and put the link to my campaign in the description box below. Next month marks the four year anniversary since the launch of my Patreon campaign. It has been such an incredible journey. Uh, we've built a community over there of now about 3,000 makers. It's really, really a great space to connect with me, connect with other people. And there are literally now hundreds of recipes for you to take advantage of all just at the $5 level. I post weekly, sometimes twice weekly, recipes and tutorials. I never take any of them down. Just at the $5 level, there's so much knowledge for you to access. I really do hope that you'll check it out. In addition to my very popular $5 tier, there are also four other tiers for you to take a look at and take advantage of if you like, each with their own unique benefits. Most recently, we have started offering coupon codes to my favorite suppliers, including a 10% off coupon code to makesy.com and either a five or $10 off coupon code to onlinelabels.com, some of my favorite suppliers, making your sign up to my campaign so well worth it. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and put the link in the description box below. I really hope you'll check it out. All right, let's make some candles. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and cut up the wax that we're gonna be using for these candles. Now I am using the 1617 brand number seven. This is a soy wax blend. It's mostly soy wax with a little bit of food grade paraffin in there. And I really, really am loving this wax um, for my go-to kind of everyday candle making. So it does come in slabs. You do have to cut it up, but it is a really nice one pour wax, you get very, very good glass adhesion, and it also gives you very, very smooth tops, and it's a super easy, friendly wax to use. The instructions are very consistently good with how to use this wax. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut this up. I'm filling this roasting pot up. Um, this is just a Presto pot, a Presto roasting pot that we have fashioned a little spigot on the end. I'll show you that in just a little bit. But this way you can melt down quite a bit of wax at a time. And then you can also set your temperature on it so it's not getting too hot. You can get it right to the correct temperature. So like the title of my video suggests, things with candle making lately have not been really, really great. And I've started to analyze why that might be happening. Um, I don't know if that's happening to everybody. I kind of think it probably is a trend with other candle makers. Um, however, you guys can let me know in the comments if you know if this is happening to you or other people as well with regards to candle making in general. Um, but I started to really think about some of the reasons why my candle sales have been kind of low. In fact, this past Christmas, Christmas of 2023, was probably the worst candle sales for the fall and winter season that I have ever seen, even since the beginning of my candle making journey back in that started in 2001. So it really was kind of shocking and a little bit discouraging, to be honest, to just not really, to have prepared for that Christmas season and the holiday season the way that I normally do. And it's now May and I have a ton, well, not a ton. I've started to get rid of some of them 
and um, put them on sale and stuff like that. But I still have holiday candles lingering around, which is not normal. So I noticed a decline in candle sales probably around last summer, around last summer. In fact, up and through the pandemic during 2020 and 2021, candle sales were still pretty good. Um, people were at home a lot. I attribute that to people being at home a lot, working from home and just not being able to go out due to the pandemic. And so they wanted to make their space really nice and cozy. And so buying candles was still something that people were doing because it was just a little bit of like self care and creating a nice environment to work and go to school in your home. So candle sales were actually pretty good in 2020 and 2021. Um, then I started to notice kind of a decline in candle sales. And I was like, well, you know, it's probably inflation. So we've seen, obviously, prices of everything have gone up um, and they continue to do so. So people, I think, you know, the general public, me included, just start to scale back on some of those luxury items. And because you have to save money for the necessities like gas, food, and electricity. Like our electricity bill this past winter doubled from what it was in the last, in the winter of 2022. Um, 2023 energy bills in my house skyrocketed. So when you have to spend your money on necessities, you don't really have a lot left over for luxury type items, which I think candles are considered a luxury item. So I think that was kind of the first thing that I saw that I felt like was contributing to the lack of candle sales. So along those same lines, with inflation, comes higher prices for goods and services as well. So I was starting to notice that my candle pricing, I had to adjust my candle prices because the cost of fragrance oils um, from a lot of the suppliers, in particular a few that I buy supplies from regularly, prices had gone way up on fragrance oils. Sometimes double or triple the cost of what they were a year before. So of course I had to adjust the cost of my candles because I was having to spend more on goods and services and mostly that included fragrance oils. I didn't notice a huge difference in the other materials needed for candle making. Um, but mostly the fragrance oils and, and again you need a lot of fragrance to make a nice candle so that alone created an increase in my own in my own inventory so i think what was happening is people couldn't afford or you know couldn't justify the luxury of buying a candle but then also you you combine that with the cost of your candles going up that's not a good recipe. All right, so all the wax is cut up and I have my warmer now sitting on 200 degrees. We wanna go ahead and warm this particular wax up to just over 200 degrees before we do anything else with it. So we're gonna go ahead and set this aside and allow this wax to melt. And as you can see, my roasting pot has been fashioned with a little spigot here that my husband put on for me. You just wanna make sure that's closed. And I'm gonna go ahead and move this over and then we're going to go ahead and wick our containers now let me show you which containers i'm using here i'm doing these beautiful evermore cylinder containers they come from also they come from 1617 just like my wax does and also my wicks come from 1617 as well we're using the alabaster white obsidian black and the tiffany blue these are amazing vessels. They're so elegant and beautiful. So this is what we're gonna be filling up today. Um, and talking about my candle sales and how they haven't been doing well, um, 
and getting back into some cattle making for the upcoming spring and summer season, actually now more coming into the summer season, um, I am not making a huge batch today because I just kind of want to see how this goes. Um, so we're only making four of each color. So we're going to be doing a total of 12 candles today. But I also wanted to continue to talk to you about some other things that I thought were contributing to my candle sales. But I want to tell you first that we're using this beautiful wick kit also from 1617. These fit the containers perfectly. This is how you're going to get a perfectly centered wick. Now we're double wicking these containers with two CDN3 style wicks. This wax over here likes a cooler burn and the CDN series burns cooler. And so you're going to get a really nice scent throw with this wax and wick combination. So you're just going to pop these little stabilizers down to the bottom of your container. So all you're going to do is use these candle stickers here I got from Candle Science after you put your centering tool down at the bottom to your container and then you're going to place your wick right over the wick sticker. And this one doesn't want to stick so well so let's see how this goes. Okay so we're going to go ahead and place it right there. I like to use a pencil just to kind of make sure everything gets stuck down and then give it a little tug and make sure it's stuck. And on to the second one. Now, if you're going to invest in these containers, I highly recommend the wick stabilizing kit because you're going to get a perfectly wicked candle every time. So it makes your candle making very consistent. All right, so while I'm wicking the rest of these, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why I think there were some other reasons contributing to the candle making and the sales. So when sales started to not perform as well, I kind of backed off of making a lot of candles because I didn't want a huge inventory of candles sitting around that weren't getting sold. Um, you know, and I, if you guys are familiar with my content, you know that there's a lot of other things that I make besides candles. So it was okay to just kind of take a little break from making candles consistently based on the way sales were performing. But I also was noticing, and this is something that I've noticed over the last probably four years or so, maybe even a little bit longer, maybe five years now, I've noticed that candle making as a hobby and candle making businesses have really exploded. Um, up until about five years ago, up until about five years ago, there were very few of us. Um, when you consider all things, of course there were a lot back then, but compared to what we have now, I mean, it was hard to find any videos on candle making, um, that was one of the reasons I started making my first candle making videos was because it was hard to find information on candle making on YouTube. Everything's on YouTube, but a good candle making tutorial was kind of hard to come by just because there weren't that many candle makers on the scene. And in the last five years or so, candle making has completely exploded. So there's a lot of competition in the candle making arena. Um, at the moment. And that really got even bigger during also the pandemic when people were looking to make extra, you know, side hustle money and they were picking up, they were picking up different hobbies that they could do at home and different skills. And I did a lot of candle teaching 
during that lockdown period of COVID. So I know that, and those were some of my most popular classes, and I know that the candle making scene has really exploded. And so again, the competition is a little stiffer than it's used to be than it used to be because it it seemed for a long time that I didn't know of any other candle makers really at all. Um, I would go to markets. I don't really do um, craft fairs anymore, but I used to work at um, markets and craft fairs, and I would be the single candle vendor at an event. And now when you attend these events, there are several candle makers. So um, yeah, so that's part of the reason, but that's to be expected. That's business, that's what happens. Um, candle making is a very fun and satisfying hobby. And I know that when you're in, when you're into something like that and you really like it, you wanna share it. And so I understand why there's a lot of people who are doing it now. So I think that's contributing also to my overall candle sales. And then fast forward to Christmas, fall and Christmas of 2022. So there was, there was something going on with the candle design of mine. Um, I was kind of looking to change things up with my design. Um, these are beautiful vessels. These are absolutely gorgeous and I love them. However, they cost a lot to ship. You know, I'm a small business. So passing this shipping cost onto the customer plus the cost of the candle was getting quite high. So I started looking into other things I could do to kind of make the cost a little bit lower. And so I settled on a different candle container. And, that, and you guys probably saw that. A lot of you probably saw that. I put out a little tutorial of how to use those candle tins. Um, I was doing 16 ounce and eight ounce candle tins. And I like the look of those. Um, I've seen those done over the years pretty consistently. They've never really not been around. Um, but I think the change in style of vessel for me, you guys know also too, I um, was using and still use, I just haven't made them in a while, those clear straight sided 16 and eight ounce containers from Uline. Those were real popular on my website when I would fill them with candles with wax because you didn't have to charge a lot for the candle because the containers themselves were pretty inexpensive and they looked just really sleek and nice. And they had a, an accompanying lid. You guys know I had a really popular candle making tutorial video where I showed everybody how to make a candle using those containers. Anyway, I wanted to try something a little bit different from those containers. Um, they are inexpensive, but you know, sometimes as a maker, you get a little bit bored with the things that you're using. And so I wanted to have a different option for a vessel that wasn't something as expensive as these type that I'm working with now, but were different than those straight sided ones that I've been using for a long time. So I decided to go with the candle tins and I think that that backfired on me, if I'm being perfectly honest. I think that my demographic and the people that buy candles from me had gotten used to those straight sided clear containers and also the containers like this that I'm working with now. Um, so these were the ones that I'm working with now are part of a luxury line of candles for me. So what I had were two different lines of candles. I had the regular ones in the clear straight sided 16 ounce and eight ounce. And then I had my luxury line that were in containers like this or similar to this. The, con the luxury brand are a little bit more expensive. Um, so my most popular candles had always been those straight-sided si straight jars. And before that too, I was using mason jars back when I very first started 
candle making and those have always been very popular. So switching to the tins, the eight ounce and the 16 ounce tins actually took me a lot of practice to get them right. They're not easy to wick um, at all. In fact, I still think that they don't burn as great, even though I'm using the same wax and the same fragrances, they just, they just aren't burning as beautifully as I would like, I guess. And we did a little something with the labels as well, where we put some graphics on the labels. Um, just kind of a fall and a Christmas themed graphic to match the name. And although I thought they looked really good, they didn't, they didn't get a very good reception meaning they just didn't sell. And I was kind of surprised. Like I said, usually the holiday season is the time when candles sell for me the best during the fall and the winter. And this past Christmas of 2022, they sat. And I, I believe it's because of the combination of the fact that I had to up the prices and then I changed the vessel. So candle tins. So then I started to really analyze why they weren't selling and I decided that candle tins themselves, although I like the look of them, these are candles typically that you can find at a, at a lower price, you can find a tin, a candle in a tin at a pretty low price at like your local Trader Joe's. You guys have probably, if you're candle makers, you've probably seen Trader Joe's will carry candles in the 16 and eight ounce tins with the little Trader Joe's logo on it and they're inexpensive. And there's other stores like Trader Joe's that do the same thing. So I think it was probably pretty confusing to my demographic. This is probably getting really long winded, but I just, wanted to get this off my chest and I wanted you guys to chime in and tell me if you had the same or are having the same issues that I am with candle making lately. But I think it was confusing to my demographic to come onto my website and see something that looked like a candle they could get at Trader Joe's for an expensive price is really what was going on. That's why I think the candle tins didn't sell. So that was an epic fail um, on my part. I should have just stuck to my straight-sided glass containers and my luxury line. Um, but I was really trying to cut cost where I could and it didn't work out. So after Christmas, I went ahead and discounted, I discounted all the fall and winter and Christmas themed candles that were on my website. I've actually discounted them twice. So right now the cost that they are at on my website, the Christmas and fall themed candles is as low as I wanna go. Um, I'm barely making a profit, believe it or not, off of the ones that are on the website right now. So I am making a little bit of a profit, but it's not much more than breaking even. Um, but at this point, that's what I can do with those candles. And they have been slowly, since they've been marked down twice, they have been slowly going. And I'm just gonna continue to keep them at that price until they all finally get sold off. We've actually also gifted out uh, a lot of them, like around the holiday season when they weren't getting sold, we gifted them out to, you know, people we would normally give gifts to, like teachers, family friends, um, things like that. So we have, we have been able to do a little something with them, but it's May, it's May, and I still have pumpkin candles and fresh snow candles and it's just an interesting, it's just an interesting time. I've never seen this with, with my candles. So usually, like I said, around Christmas time, all my candles sell out and, and we do that in, in the matter of a few weeks and then 
you know, we're good. Um, so yeah, I'd love to hear, I'd love to hear your, your take on what, what's happening. And if this is also a phenomenon that's happening to you, I would love to hear your story. I have seen, because you know, I'm always looking around. I'm always looking to see what other people are pricing their candles at and what types of materials and supplies they're using. And I'm always shocked when I see, I think I price my candles pretty high or I've had to in the last year or so, which to me feels high. And then I'll see someone, another company doing something like an eight ounce, an eight ounce soy wax candle, an eight ounce soy wax candle in an amber jar, in an amber glass jar, and they'll be selling those for around $50. Um, and not including shipping or tax. So I look at companies like that and I wonder how in the world, because I know what materials they're using, I know what those materials cost, how are they selling those for $50? And, and are they? Is that even a thing? Is that just, is it a, perce a, a perception of like, oh, this is, a, this is a luxury candle and these are going for $50, they must be fantastic but nobody ever really buys them. I wonder if that's something that's going on, but anyway, you can chime in and let me know what you think is happening here. One last little note here while we're discussing the candle sales is I've noticed also a trend in the last couple years. I would really love to hear from you regarding this piece. Um, I've noticed a trend in the last couple years that holiday and holiday themed items in particular don't sell well. Um, and I, and I, again, I definitely noticed that this season, but usually I can sell, um, usually I can sell Christmas themed with no problem, winter theme, fall theme candles with no problem. In fact, people really used to like that and gravitate to that. And you'll see your other big supplier, you'll see your other big candle suppliers like, let's, let's take Bath and Body Works for instance. Bath and Body Works has a really nice smelling candle. Um, and they really have done a great job of selling seasonal or theme-based candles. Uh, not so much for me anymore. Um, I've noticed that People do not gravitate towards the seasonal smelling candles. And again, my theory on that, it's just my theory, so I'd love to hear from you guys if this is something that's also happening to you. This is a, just a change in the market I've noticed. But I've noticed that people aren't buying theme-based or seasonal candles. And my theory on that is because if I'm buying a candle to gift to somebody and they open it up on Christmas and it is a Christmas themed candle, maybe they don't want to burn that candle after Christmas. So do people really want to be stuck with a Christmas themed candle after Christmas? Or if you're gifting somebody a candle, would you rather go with something more neutral smelling so whoever you're gifting it to can choose whenever they want to burn it and not feel like they're left with something that they can't use. That's my theory. Me, personally, I burn fall and Christmas themed candles all year round because I really, really like the warm smelling scents which come around fall and winter. So let me know what you think about that. I also had a real hard time selling wax melts this year. Wax melts and wax melts in particular in the fall and the winter themed smells. Um, just an interesting change in the market that I've noticed. I would love to hear from you guys regarding if that is something that has also been happening to you. Well, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and wick the rest of these and then I'll bring you back when we're ready for the next step. 
All right, we are ready for the next step, and that is to go ahead and weigh off the wax that we're gonna need for four of these containers. Now we're gonna fill these containers up to about 14 ounces per container. So for four candles, we're gonna need a total of 56 ounces. So we're gonna weigh off 56 ounces. My wax right now is sitting just over 200 degrees. Well, it's sitting just at 200 degrees, a little, maybe a little bit over. So we're gonna go ahead and weigh this off. And then the next step is to add in the fragrance oil. Okay, so I'm gonna put my melt pot right here on my scale. I'm gonna tear it out. And then I'm gonna start weighing off my wax. I'm just gonna open the spigot. Um, I know that you guys can't see that, um, but I'm just releasing the spigot and allowing the wax to flow into my melt, directly into my melt pot. All right, we're sitting just at around 56 ounces exactly. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take the temperature real fast. And we're sitting at 205, which is perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and add our fragrance oil in. We're gonna be going ahead and using a fragrance oil called Sea Minerals. This comes from Cattle Science. And we're gonna be weighing off 5.6 Okay, so I misspoke when I told you I was weighing off 56 ounces. Um, we're making a batch of 56 ounces. The total is 56 ounces. So I've weighed off 50 ounces, 50.4 ounces of wax, and now we're adding in 5.6 ounces of sea minerals. It's a really clean, oceany type salty sea air smell and it throws really well with this wax so the 5.6 ounces of fragrance is a 10 percent load or it's actually 10 percent content so of the 56 total ounces in this batch 10 percent of that is fragrance oil so we have a total batch size of 56 total ounces. 50 ounces of wax and 5.6 ounces of fragrance. 90% wax, 10% fragrance. Okay, this wax doesn't need to be stirred and stirred and stirred. It's super easy. I know some waxes I've shown you in the past, like soy wax, you do have to stir it for a long time. So we're gonna go ahead and pour our first candle into the Tiffany Blue. This is a great kind of summer vacation type fragrance. It's really beautiful. Now, if you follow this recipe, you should not be left over with any wax in your container because We created the formula to fit into these containers perfectly. So I'm just topping each one of these off. And there you go. There it is. Now we are gonna have to go ahead and fill up this roasting pot again with a little bit more wax and then I'll bring you back for the next pour. All right, we're back for the next pour and we're gonna be using ca Cashmere Plum. Cashmere Plum is a beautiful fragrance oil that comes from Candle Science again. It's a beautiful, clean, um, gosh, kind of 
It's got a really nice cashmere plum and a tart top note. I wouldn't even say to call this candle cashmere plum because the plum might turn people off. Um, black cherry and cashmere might be a better name for it. It smells really good. So again, we're using 50.4 ounces of wax at 200 degrees and 5.6 ounces of fragrance for a 10% fragrance content. This candle too smells so good, it has such a good hot throw. It's one of my favorites. And the Sea Minerals is also a very good fragrance. So one of the things I decided to, when the candles weren't selling that well, we're just kind of getting our feet wet again with getting back into selling candles with this small 12 candle batch. But one of the things that I started to think or shift my thinking was, you know, even if they're not selling and we have some leftover candles here, it's okay because I love making them and I absolutely love burning them in my house. So they're not going to waste, um, you know. And I think the tide will turn and people will start coming back around and purchasing candles again. Another thing too is I'm not in any stores. I'm just an online store only. So I think sometimes when you can't pick up a, a candle and smell it, it makes it, it makes it a little more difficult to gauge like what it smells like. And then one other point to make regarding the candle cells is just to say that when you can go to a big chain store like Target, and I know, I believe my candles smell and look nicer than a, a candle that you can purchase at Target or Walmart, but in today's day and age with inflation being crazy high, you can buy a five or $10 or $8 candle at Target or Walmart and it really makes it hard for people who make a nice quality candle like these to compete with. All right, I'll bring you back for the next pour. All right, this is our third pour now. We're gonna be using the fragrance oil um, Island Fresh Type by Nature's Garden. It smells very fresh, a lot like, um, a lot like a fresh and clean linen or cotton or a laundry detergent type smell. It smells really good. So we're gonna go ahead, again, this is the same formula for the four candles. We're gonna be using 50, 0.4 ounces of wax right here and 5.6 ounces of fragrance for a 10% fragrance content. There we go. And out of the bottle, this one is very strong. It has a good scent throw in your candles. So we're just gonna go ahead and give this a stir. Again, this wax doesn't take much at all to stir. Just a little bit is all you need. Just want to make sure it's very well combined. We're pouring, we are pouring the fragrance oil in to the wax when the wax is right around 200 degrees. Okay, so now we're using the white Evermore cylinders. These are called alabaster on their website. Very, very elegant looking. All 
right, the only thing left to do here is to make one more candle. We're gonna be doing a test candle in this beautiful iridescent ever more cylinder and we're gonna be testing out the fragrance called Bitter Peach and Sweet Amber. This is by Makesy. Um, if you purchase this fragrance oil or anything else, I have an affiliate link in the description box below. Please use the link to purchase this fragrance oil or anything else over there at makesy.com. Um, the affiliate link really helps me out when you use it to make your purchases. And in addition to that, there is a 10% off coupon code when you sign up to my Patreon campaign to makesy.com. Go check it out. All right, so we're ready to go ahead now and pour in the Bitter Peach and Sweet Amber Fragrance Oil. So we're using 12.6 ounces of wax and 1.4 ounces of Bitter Peach and Sweet Amber Fragrance Oil for a total of 14 ounces. This again is at a 10% fragrance load or fragrance content, I should say. And we're gonna go ahead and give that a good stir. Gosh, this fragrance smells super good. Um, it's very unique. It's not really a fragrance that you're gonna find. I haven't seen fragrances like this anywhere else. Um, Makesy has some really interesting fragrance accords and this really pops in the wax so far. So I'm gonna be very interested to see how it does when I burn it. It smells awesome. It smells very modern. Um, maybe like, mm, gosh, it's reminding me of something I can't put my finger on at the moment, but it's a very modern type, sophisticated fragrance. And maybe this is where candle making is kind of going these days. So we're going to go ahead and just pour this in again. When you pour a candle you want to stay off directly off the wick um, you don't want to pour too slow or too fast you just want to pour in that space between the wick and the container and there we go all right everybody i'm going to go ahead and leave you with a little time lapse of how this test burn goes and a little review of the bitter peach and sweet amber fragrance and that'll be it Okay, this candle has been burning now for a little over three hours and it's doing really nicely. As you can see, I've got a good melt pool going on here and it's almost reached the edges of the glass. And I've got a nice flame, not too high, not too low. And I would say the scent throw is very good um, for just being 24 hours cured. The smell is filling the room. And actually, I like how some of the notes in this fragrance have muted a little bit in, in the candle itself. So out of the bottle, the smell is a little bit sharp, but in the candle, it really softens out to a beautiful fragrance. So I really am enjoying this. I will be making more candles with this fragrance. And I hope you liked this video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Please remember to leave me comments or questions below. That really means a lot to me. Share this video with a friend and subscribe to my channel. All right, everybody. Catch you on the next video. Bye. Keep shining.